Welcome back to the Mario Matter Podcast, episode number 21. My lucky number, actually. January 18th. Guys, how is it the 18th? Time flew like nobody's business. Like, two weeks ago, a little over that, we were celebrating New Year's. Get the party poppers, get the get all the champagne. What happened? It's the 18th. It's almost February in, like, what, 12, 11, 13 days? Like, like, come on! Where did time go? Anyways, you are tuned in to a Nintendo podcast. I'm sure that, 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 that you can expect some Nintendo news. Very shortly, we'll get into all of our topics for today. But, uh, recently, I mean, I've been good. How have you been doing? How are you? How are you doing? Are you sick? I hope that you're not sick. I hope you're thriving. I hope that all is well with school, work, whatever you've got going on. I hope it is all well. Because on the Mario Matter, we don't just talk about Nintendo stuff. We talk about you as well, uh, at least for the first little bit and maybe the end where we answer your questions. But anyways, about me, I guess we can start off. Uh, I've been actually trying to finish my backlog of games. So everyone has those games that you buy that seem really cool and you want to buy those 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 games. But after a while, they get boring, or a better game comes out, or you buy a better game, and those games that you bought originally go off to the side. They're in they're they're in what's called your backlog. So I have a lot of games in my Switch backlog right over here. Uh, so I've beat a few. I beat Yoshi's Crafted World, and I beat oh god, what was the other? It was I can't remember, but Yoshi's Crafted World was one of them. So I'm going in an order now. So now I'm working on, not that one, I'm working on Captain Toad right now. Uh, I beat it on the Wii U, but I'm not going to not beat it on the Switch as well, because it's one one of my favorite games, like top 20 of all time. So I'm working on beating Captain Toad right now. It, It is a long, like this game is long. It is a long game. So we are working on that at the moment. I just put it in the wrong spot. Uh, do you see this mess here? Oh, okay. So alphabetical order. I'll I'll check if that's right later. I have I have no clue. But I'm working on the 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 backlog. I have games like I haven't even beat Pokemon Violet yet. I have that in there. I have Sonic Frontiers in there. I have Bug Snacks in there. There's a lot of backlogged games, and that's just for the Switch. That is only the Switch backlog. Imagine the Wii, the DS, the 3DS, the Wii U. Gosh, I have so many games in in the backlog, but I'll get to all of them eventually. I mean, there's not many great games coming out until Tears of the Kingdom that we know of right now. Like, we could get a game announced next month, but... As of right now, it's just Tears of the Kingdom, and that's about it. So until then, I have to complete the backlog of games. I mean, not all of the games, because that is a short amount of time. But if I can get to maybe like 20, finish 20 games between then and now, good stuff. But anyways, that is enough about me and what's been going on. We have fun stuff to get to. So let's go ahead and let's go to our reading headline segment, where we read headlines of cool topics that we cannot talk about for more than a few minutes. Let's go. Reading headlines. So we have three headlines. It is admittedly a slow news week for Nintendo. There's normally a bit more, but we do have some interesting things for our headlines, though. So let's get into it. Our friends in Canada are going to like this one. So if you pre-order Kirby's Return to Dreamland through GameStop in Canada, of course, you will get a Kirby notepad along with the game as a pre-order bonus. Now, why have they not announced that in other countries as well, or just America anyway? Is that a Canada only, like only Canadians use notepads? Come on, but I'm not trying to always make it about my country. It is cool that GameStop Canada is doing that, and I do think that that is a very cool pre-order bonus. If you're pre-ordering Kirby, hopefully there's something for everywhere like if you're getting it from target hopefully they throw they throw in a dang kirby plush or something if you're getting it from gamestop hopefully they throw in a kirby sticker pack or something that is if you're not ordering from gamestop canada so hopefully every pre-order gets you something but that is the one for gamestop canada and the notepad does look pretty cool and that is a pretty unique pre-order bonus normally we see plushies or sticker packs we don't always see notepads so that is a cool bonus for those canadians out there who have not pre-ordered the game go ahead and do so from gamestop unless you find some other 
cool deal somewhere. But I mean, how much better can you do than a notepad? I would get it from GameStop, but that's just me. All right, next for our friends in France, we have some news for you. So the Nintendo Switch has become France's best-selling console of all time. Did you know that? Because I did not know that. So not too long ago, the Wii was the best-selling console in France, but now the Switch has sold 7.1 million copies, or units, I should say, and it has surpassed the Wii to now become France's best-selling console. Now, to me, when I read that, 7.1 million units sounds very small, because I'm sure in Japan, the Switch has sold like 50 million. Over here in America, it's probably sold like 20, 20 in the UK, 20, you know, whatever. 7.1 is not a lot, but if you think about it, worldwide, the Switch has sold like 115 million copies. So the, the France numbers do add over, and so it's more than it sounds. So, I mean, fair play to the Switch. It took over the PS5, the Xbox everything to be the best-selling console in France. It's not very often that you see a best-selling console become overtaken, but it did right here with the Switch over the Wii. And I mean, yeah, congrats to Nintendo for shipping out enough copies. And that number is only going to go up from 7.1 million. So I'm excited to see where that does end up. The CEO of Nintendo France has said, quote, we sold 987,000 Switch in 2022, which is the best performance on the market. One in two consoles sold in France last year was a Switch, which is a bigger number than it sounds. Like, like one in two consoles doesn't sound like very much but if you think about it one in two consoles was a switch is a lot more than it sounds he also said we have the will to constantly conquer a new audience beyond our fans what a what a what a class gentleman all right now a headline that you might just be very excited about splatoon 3 is halfway through their chill season era and because of that the halfway point nintendo announced that there is an update coming to splatoon 3 Tonight, as of recording, yesterday, as of me posting this video, there is a 2.1.0 update, and I would tell you what is in the update, but if I was going to do that, I, was, I would be in this chair, I would, I would be here for, I think, maybe an hour reading all these changes, fixed an issue, fixed an issue, fixed an issue, fixed an issue, I would be here reading you all the issues. There are so many, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sum it up for you, but if you want to read the entire list of changes, the link is in the description if you want to do that. Now, in terms of what changed to the game, literally everything. Some weapons shoot further, some use less ink, some story mode changes. I mean, there's a lot of stuff, so most of it is bug fixes. There are some weapon changes, there are some multiplayer changes to make the whole game run smoother. There's a lot of tiny changes that if you go into Splatoon 3 right now, after the update, you probably wouldn't notice much different, if anything at all. So it's small changes just to prevent glitches and anything from going wrong in the game or in competitive play. Yeah, I mean, I'm reading these and they are the smallest changes. Like for example, the splatter shot weapon takes 200 points to get the special ability now it's 190 like you're not even gonna notice a difference right there like that's that is the smallest change but anyway they've changed a lot of small things to make the game better and that comes out tonight january 17th once again when you're watching this video the update is already out go and download it and tell me if you see anything different but moving on to our main topics of today all right, so for our next topic, we just had two new amiibos released. We had one as the Kazuya amiibo and one as the Sephiroth amiibo from Super Smash Bros. So both of them released just over the last week and they both cost $16 or $59.99 if you need the exact four digits. But anyways, did you buy them? If you did, what do you think? Now, I heard some complaints of the faces looking off. They just look off because they're small detailed and they just do not look right. So I'll put a picture on the screen if I can find one. But if you have them, was it worth it? Because my like biggest thing, my biggest thing here is $16 just for one of these 
one fighter amiibos. Now, if that's like your main character, main Smash Bros brawler, then maybe, but I still feel like 16 bucks is a little hefty. Now get this, 16 plus 16, if you buy both is $32. I, I have that right, yeah, okay. I, 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 I just wanna make sure. I wanna make sure I have that right. So, 32 bucks. Do you know what you can do with 32 bucks? Instead of buying these amiibo, you can buy these two fighters and a lot more in the actual Smash Bros game. Like you can pay 32 bucks to Nintendo and get a lot of different things. You, you, you can either get two figures or get like eight new fighters in Smash Bros. Like honestly, they're asking for a lot of money. I say like 12 bucks, like $12.99 or, or $11.99, not $15.99. Like that's kind of crazy, but I'll let it slide because I'm not buying them. So, you know, but those two released, if you want them, they are in stores online. I would get it online just, just to be safe, but up to you where you go and where you spend your money. And so those came out, cool stuff. I've not bought a Smash Bros. Amiibo in forever. I'm not. I'm surprised that they're still making them, and I wonder if they'll make Smash Bros. Amiibo for the next game. I sort of doubt it. I sort of do, just, just because... It's taken so long for some of these Amiibo to come out, and I, it just feels like it's a heavy side quest for Nintendo. Like, they don't need to be doing it, but because they have to make one for every fighter, they're just doing it. But I don't think Nintendo loves Amiibo anymore. I think that they like Amiibo. They don't love their Amiibo, they don't love making them, but they do it because we do, and the Switch supports Amiibo. Do I see Amiibo being supported on the next console? <sighs> now, don't get me wrong, I love Amiibo, but I just, it's just not working as well as it used to. Toys to Life is dead. Skylanders, Disney Infinity, these Toys to Life games ended years ago, and it shocks me that Nintendo is still trying. So, I think these are probably some of, and, and, and I say some of, the last Amiibo. Now, there might be like 20 after this, but if you look back in like five years, these were one of the last Amiibo, if there are like 20 more after this one. So, I mean, Amiibo are probably coming to an end. They probably are. Not to like be downbeat, I just want to be serious and tell you what I think. Once again, I'm not an Amiibo hater, not a Nintendo hater, but I just don't think that they're going to last super long. I love Amiibo, but I don't see it working. So with that, those two came out. If you want them, go and get them. I believe they're at GameStop, Target, maybe Walmart, the Nintendo store, their online site, all those places. You know where to go to get Amiibo. But yeah, so those came out. And the next Amiibo to come out are Mithra and Pyra. Those are, are the two coming out later this year. No confirmed date on those two yet, but if I do get a date, I will let you know. And that is it for the Amiibo section. But yeah, I believe after Mithra and Pyra, that's that's the last wave of Smash Bros. Amiibo, I believe. I don't think I have that wrong. But after that, I'm excited to see which other Amiibo Nintendo introduces. Are they going to make some for Tears of the Kingdom? Are they going to make some for a future Mario game on the Switch? I don't know. We got to see. But either way, those two Amiibo came out. We got two more coming out later. And Amiibo are dying, sadly. But uh, <laughs> that's for a later date. Moving on. All right, I've grabbed my phone for this one. So if you plan on going to Super Nintendo World next month, February, when it opens, you need to get the Universal Studios Hollywood app. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start screen recording, and I'm going to show you this cool thing that they've added to the app. So, if we go to Super Nintendo World, loading, 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 they have a whole section on the app to use when you get there. So, they have these cool bands at the actual park. If you want, you can scan your band as soon as you get it. And then you can collect stamps, view your rank, and see how many coins you've collected. And use the map to track your adventure. Alright, so, obviously I'm not there. Obviously I have no wristband. So we go over to rank. Welcome. See how you stack up against other players. View your team, individual, and daily rankings. Also compare your stats with the players you are following. Okay, so, we click beyond that. Ends in 16 minutes. I'm not sure what the rankings are. Oh, okay, so these are like real people on this list and I guess they're like at the actual park in Japan 
I assume these are like real people or maybe they like were let in early to the Hollywood one and they're racking up points for something. I don't know how Super Nintendo World works, but they're racking up points for, yeah, I mean, doing something today. So there's that all time. Antoine with 27,000 points. Once again, if you know where these points come from, let me know. I would research this for you and I can, and I did, but I couldn't find much. Now, Mario Kart here, I assume, no, I can't assume, I have no clue. But either way, and you know, without rambling, people are racking up some 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 points here. And I better go to Super Nintendo World to, to start racking up points because, I mean, geez. Anyways, if we, if we go to the map, this is your world map. Tap the pin icons to see what attractions are nearby. The more attractions you visit, the more pins you unlock. So it rewards you for going to as many places as you as you can in the actual theme park. So the golden mushroom was stolen. Bowser Jr. has it locked away. His minions guard the keys. Collect the keys to take back the golden mushroom. Power-up bands allow you to play in the mushroom kingdom. Yeah, no, no, no crap. Uh, punch blocks, collect coins, explore, discover, and play. All that just to view the map. Okay, so we can zoom in. We can zoom in. So I, I assume this is the... What's the entrance? I mean, I've never been here before. Uh, what's the entrance? Just is, is is the castle the the entrance, and then you like walk out here. Uh, I don't know, but here's Mario. Is that where like Mario actually is? Yeah. Okay. So Mario meet up, and then uh, Luigi meet up. Where's M Swizzle meet up? Uh, block combo. So you, maybe you can hit some blocks there. Block combo again. Piranha plant nap mishap. Not sure what that is. Brick block, block combo, block combo, block combo, block, uh, question mark block. What's this? Koopa Troopa power punch. I assume that's like one of those things where like you punch it as hard as you can. Once again, I have to make predictions because I've never been to the park before. So, you know, how am I, how am I supposed to know? Uh, here we have more block combo things. We have a Bowser Jr. block as well. Okay binoculars you can you can see the whole park i assume bowser jr shadow showdown that sounds interesting okay mario kart so that must be where those people are racking up those mario kart points that we were that we were looking at earlier uh we've got a question mark block what's behind thwomp panel panic okay checkpoint flag block combo goomba crazy crank like, what are these things? What are these? Okay, we we go up here. There's no other locations. I believe that we, you know, hit the button on everything that we could. So that's all in the park. Honestly, how come when I when I look at the map, the park seems like like really small? Like, why does it seem super super small? I don't. I uh, I mean, I don't. I don't think it's like huge, but. This looks like really small. All right, so that is the map of the whole place. If you're going, I recommend downloading this 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 app because it really is detailed and it tells you your you know your your rank in points and it shows you the entire map and everything about it. So so if if we go to options, welcome. On this screen, you can edit your player profile, follow other players, and add more bands to your to your device. So I guess if you were if you were going with a family or friends, you could all add your band to this 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 one app. Although, if you're going with friends, I would just say add your own band to your own app. Uh, but if you're a family and, you know, you're a dad watching this and, and you're taking your kids, they may not have a phone. So what I assume is you can add multiple bands on here. Now, if I add a band, what happens? Access the camera. Okay, well, there's my keyboard. Uh, something that we're going to do later in the podcast. Uh, Mike Wazowski, uh, Coca-Cola Bear. And that's that. So we so you scan your band here, and uh, you can put it in the app, and it'll know you from there on out. So we can follow players, though I think I have to add a band first before I can follow people on the app. Uh, but otherwise, what do these buttons do? So if we hit these buttons down here, oh, it just shows us. It's 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 taking away these points. I think it just shows. It just toggles these pinpoints on the map. Okay. Well, that makes sense. 
Now, I believe that is it for the app. Yeah, you gotta scan scan the band to be able to to be able to do anything really. So there's that. But otherwise, in the meantime, if you're not there and you have no band yet, you can view the map uh, and set it all up and just be ready for your next trip to Super Nintendo World. And that is it for the app. Now that's cool. Now when I was on that scan band camera app. You saw something that I didn't want you to see, but we're going to do it right now. So, yesterday, my dad went to McDonald's, right? And you already know where this is going. It's in the same topic of Super Nintendo World. I figured I would just throw it in here. Ah, you know what? Let's move on to our next topic, and let's put it in there. Alright, so, as I was saying, my dad went to McDonald's yesterday, okay? He went there. And you know where this is going. McDonald's, Nintendo, what could it possibly be? Well, he picked me up a Mario movie toy. Now, he picked out, they let him pick. Uh, he picked out the Mario one. By the way, I did not beg him to, to do this. It was a shocker to me. So, he brought home the Mario one. And he's in a pipe. And so, I'm excited to, uh, let's see what, okay, so what does it do? Is it just there? Do you just sit, have it sit there? Okay, so, okay, hold on. So it like pops up and down. Okay, so what is it? It pops up and down. Is that the shtick or like what, what do you, <laughs> is that it? Hold on. Are there like instructions? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, hold on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. So you just, you just press it down. Look. So it says, uh, you can't see it. It says like one and two. You just press it down and that's, that's it. Which is cool. It says jumping. It says jumping Mario and you, and you just have to press it down. So that's, that's, that's all it is, which is cool. I mean, it, sorry, it's not, it's not a bad thing. I just thought that, I thought that it would like shoot a firework out or something. No, no, this, this is sick. Hold on. So this is, this is, this is the toy. That's, you know what, this, this is pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. It gets kind of stuck sometimes though. Okay, this, this is pretty cool. Okay, okay. I mean, I can't just sit here and bounce him for five minutes. I mean, okay, so toy review. It's cool, it's creative. It gets stuck. I mean, cool. this, is, this, this is cool stuff, so. Maybe it is worth ruining your healthy diet for some McDonald's to get a Mario toy. You know, maybe it is worth it. But yeah, here are some close-ups of the actual toy. It's pretty, it's detailed like pretty well, honestly. It has good detail to it. I wish I could like do some like show you it better. But now my hands look like look like birds. Look at, look at him go, jumping around. Gets stuck here and there and then, and then pops up. I mean... All right, now it looks like his fist, his left fist might be what is getting him stuck. It seems like it's like kind of getting stuck at some points or it's like too big. Yeah, something, obviously it's a free McDonald's toy with your Happy Meal, so what can you expect? But it's just like, I mean, okay. Now this makes me want to go eat McDonald's and get all the other toys and like the Donkey Kong and, and, the, and, the, and the Peach and the Luigi. I'm probably not going to do it, but if I do, which I once again highly doubt, I will update you if I do that. But anyways, Jumping Mario, success. I just, I can't believe that that is it. Like, I thought that there would be like a button on the bottom you can click and, and then he like jumps up and down or like a thing that you can pull and he jumps up and down. Not just like push it yourself, but once again, I don't want to complain. I just find things to critique and that's one of them. But otherwise, I mean, very, I mean, it's going to sit right here, like. It's going to be here in my thing. Look at that. That's actually, dude, that's a really cool addition, actually. That is a cool addition. You can always see it back there. That's a very cool addition to the Mario Matter background. And what do I rate it out of 10? Quality, we'll, we'll give the quality a 5 out of 10. It's, it's pretty, like, like, it feels good, but the jumping mechanic gets stuck. So 5 out of 10 for quality. Idea and concept, 8 out of 10. Very cool. And I mean, overall, if, I mean, if you add those two up, I say it's, a, it's like a seven out of 10. Yeah, pretty cool toy. 
I wish I had the other ones, but they're being sold on eBay for like 30 bucks each, which I'm not going to go and buy. So yeah, I would recommend go to your McDonald's if you, I mean, I'm not going to tell you to go and eat McDonald's, but if you are just in the, if you're in a McDonald's, if you want some, you know, you're, you're going out after getting that A plus on your test, you know, where are we going for dinner tonight? McDonald's, go pick up a Mario movie toy. It's pretty cool stuff. And uh, let me know which one you get in the comments. But with that cool Mario movie toy, three months before the movie, proper promotion, let's move on. Now our next topic, while I will not go on a long tangent about how we are going to get a Nintendo Direct next month, what we can talk about and expand on from last podcast is which Nintendo games are going to be announced this year. So last year, we saw Nintendo Switch Sports, we saw Pikmin 4, like games obviously get announced each and every year. Which ones are being announced this year? So I have a few predictions, hear me out. So my first prediction is a brand new Donkey Kong Country game. You have to understand, the last Donkey Kong game released in 2014, not including the port over to the Switch. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze released in 2014, February 13th, 2014. That is almost 10 years. It's been almost 10 years since the last Donkey Kong Country game. You would be crazy to think that they're not working on one right now. My prediction is that we get a Donkey Kong Country announcement in the next Direct in February. What if they announce that uh, in February and it releases, say, October? That's totally doable, and that is enough time for promotion. What if that happens? I believe that could happen, and I I mean, I, I believe it. Donkey Kong is a loved series, of course, and to not have a game for 10 years? Like, that's one of your first games. Donkey Kong in the arcade, and you're not going to make a new one? That's kind of crazy talk. So, I see that happening next month. If not, then... Then, I mean, September Direct, maybe, but I believe it has to come next month. It's been way too long. Now, we just mentioned the September Direct. What's going to come there? I say the September Direct is going to announce Super Mario Odyssey 2. Hear me out. So, we have the Mario movie coming up in April, April 7th, okay? We have that. Four months later, no, five months later, five months later, September if you don't think that they're they're gonna put out some Mario game to go with the movie, you are thinking wrong because this is such an opportunity for Nintendo to release a Mario game next to a movie. And what better game to release than Super Mario Odyssey 2? We saw with Super Mario Galaxy for the Wii, that game got a sequel, Super Mario Galaxy 2. So with Super Mario Odyssey, I expect the same thing. Super Mario Odyssey 2 revealed, announced in 2023 in September and released late next year, 2024. That, that's what I believe and that's what I think is going to happen. Is it confirmed? Heck no. But I think those are going to be two big bang games announced this year. I believe it. Uh, I mean, like last year we had Switch Sports, Mario Strikers, uh, what was the other Pikmin 4, Kirby's Return to, to Dreamland, and a few other Nintendo games were announced. So this year, to think that we won't get a new game announced soon, especially a big game, is kind of absurd. Now, two other smaller predictions that I have is one, I believe that we'll get a new Mario Sports game. So hear me out. Last year we got Super Mario Strikers. Year before that, we got Mario Golf. Let's continue a two-year streak into 2023 with Mario Baseball, Mario Super Sluggers Port, Mario, I mean, what else is basketball, Mario Sports Mix Port, you know, any of these Mario Sports games, they've been releasing them here and there, and I believe that one this year would be really nice, so that'd be cool, Mario Sports game hopefully can happen, and I will, will, I'd probably buy it, the only one that I wouldn't buy would be Mario Strikers, and I did not buy it, so with that, Mario Baseball, Basketball, sign me up anyway. So there's that. And then Tomodachi Life, guys, I still believe that's going to happen. Like, I will be beyond shocked if by the end of the Switch's lifetime, lifespan rather, we do not get a Tomodachi Life port. I will be beyond shocked because 
And this is the evidence that I bring up each time I ever talk about it. If you're going to release Miitopia, and you guys have heard me say it in the past, I said it last podcast, I'll say it here. If you're going to put out Miitopia, which sold worse than Tomodachi Life, how would you not bring Tomodachi Life? Those games are very similar as they use Miis as the main shtick, and I don't know how you can bring one without the other. Because not only does it make sense, but people are dying for this game. Everyone in the direct live chat is like, Tomodachi Life, Tomodachi Life, like people, people want the game. And so, to not bring it over is really shocking. It would be hard to believe that is going to be the case. Now, will it be announced this year? It should be. Could it be announced next year? It could be announced anytime. As long as the, the next console is not announced, Tomonachi Life could be announced tomorrow. Like, it could just be a tweet. That's how much power that, that game actually has. It could just be tweeted out one day, and then boom, new game. Now, Nintendo does do some weird things where they will tweet out, you know, some kind of announcement, and it's like you would expect it to be in a direct, but no, they just tweet it out. Like, for example, they did release a trailer, but just all of a sudden, 9 a.m. one morning, they reveal the Switch OLED. Things like that, they just tweet out randomly. So Tomodachi Life could come at any point. It could be a tweet. It could be a direct. It's own trailer, random release date. It could come whenever, but I'm expecting it in the next direct or the one after that. Now, don't get excited for any of those because those are all my guesses and my predictions. But if I had to bet money on four games, those are the games that I would bet money on to be announced in 2023. And comment down below... Which games do you believe will be announced in 2023? Because I want to know, I could be forgetting some, but those are the ones that I believe need to be announced. It's been almost 10 years since the last Donkey Kong game, almost 6 years since the last 3D Mario game apart from Bowser's Fury, only 1 year since the last Mario Sports game, but Mario Baseball has been long gone since the Wii era, and Mario Sports Mix was also a Wii game that was very fun, but has not been brought over since. So, any of those games... And then Tomodachi Life, fan favorite, sold well, an absolute no-brainer. But we have to see what Nintendo does. Could they open up a new IP, a whole new game? Could they port something old, port Splatoon 1 or something weird or, you know, whatever it might be. We gotta see, but I'm hoping for the next Direct next month. But anyways, let's move on to your favorite segment of the week. Alrighty, it is time to answer your questions. You guys left me questions on Discord to answer. If you want to ask me a question to answer on the podcast, feel free to join the Discord server in the description. And once you're in there, head over to the Ask M Swizzle channel, and then you can ask me any question about anything. So, we have a lot today. Let's go ahead and let's get to it. So, Vector Eh asks smash main my smash bros main is the me brawler i tried to main isabel for a little bit but it didn't work out so my smash main has always been me brawler ever since the wii u days so fun stuff now stuck in the shadows asks what's your favorite mega man game can i be very honest with you i've never played one someone's gonna roast me now someone's gonna roast me i've never I've just never actually dove into a Mega Man game before. Tee off on me in the comments, but never tried one. Next, Stuck in the Shadows also asks, what is your favorite Kirby copy ability? Now, I had this question before, and I answered it wrong. So, I recently replayed Kirby in the Forgotten Land. I now remember what copy ability... It's, it's when Kirby, like, gets the ability... Okay, you know what? I know. And I have an answer for you. My favorite Kirby copy ability is the Ranger ability. Now... With the Ranger ability, I would take that ability whenever I could. Something about it, just being able to, I guess, shoot from range made me so much more comfortable and it made my life so much easier. So I would always choose the Ranger ability whenever I could and it was just by far my favorite. So the Ranger ability for sure. I've upgraded it to, I believe, the Noble Ranger, but yeah, definitely the Ranger ability. What is your favorite sport? Favorite sport? Oh gosh, you know... Uh, can you count MMA like mixed martial arts? So if you can count mixed martial arts like cage fights, that's the first one. But if you mean like a more common sport, uh, I don't play any. I don't play any sports. But if my favorite one to watch is probably football. I would never play it though. So uh, we have, I would love to, uh, I love to watch mixed martial arts. I love to watch football. Those two. 
if we if we can count mixed martial arts fights as a sport, which I believe you definitely can, um, then that's first. Then football. Then third would would, would be like I don't know basketball or something. Yeah, basketball or uh, no. So I, I I like to watch soccer more than basketball really. So probably soccer. I don't ever watch soccer, but like. If I just have a choice, like, hey, you're in a room for two hours, there's a, t- there's a TV, what are you watching? I'm watching soccer. Now, once again, if you know me, you know I don't watch soccer, but I won't make an effort to put it on, but if those are the choices, then I'm choosing soccer. Next, we have, what is your favorite NES game? My favorite NES game is Punch-Out. Punch-Out is my f- one of my favorite series. I'm sad to see that it, it appears dead. They're not making a new Punch-Out game, it seems like, but Punch-Out for the NES is my favorite NES game. So, for sure. Next, we have a question by JC the Memer, your Splatoon 3 weapon of choice. That would be the Sploosh-O-Matic. I've always used the Sploosh-O-Matic ever since very early Splatoon 2 days. I've always used it. It's my favorite and I it's to the point where any other weapon just feels terrible, whether it be a sniper, the, the little uh bubble bubble thing or bubble slosher rather i cannot use any of those things it's just too hard for me because i am so used to the sploosh matic if it's not a sploosh matic get it out of my sight next that die hard mario fan asks favorite female mario character you don't have very many you have peach daisy birdo ah uh, toadette okay so we have some options i'm gonna say toadette and that's probably just because i love toad so much to the point where you would love the female version of Toad so much. So Toadette is my favorite. And I've also used her in some of the Mario games. Cool character. I love Toadette and I love Toad. I love both of the Toad. All the Toads. Toad, Toadette, Toad's Worth. Give me them all. So Toadette is the answer. 3UpMoon asks, what is your favorite Pokemon? Favorite Pokemon is Stantler. I couldn't give you a reason. I don't have a Stantler Pokemon card, no Stantler plush. I just have seen all the Pokemon and I'm like, okay, I love that one. So I love Stantler and he's always been my favorite. He, he's actually in my profile picture for YouTube. If I haven't changed it yet, I'm working on changing my YouTube profile picture. Not like crazy, but just like a different picture. So as of this second, Stantler is my YouTube profile picture. So, you know, I've, I've always loved Stantler. Pretty Pretty Princess asks, what is your favorite Mario Kart character? My favorite one is the Villager. I have always used the, the, the Villager since I could, as long as I can remember. Because in Mario Kart, not all of the characters are the same weight, which affects how your kart performs. So the Villager is the weight that I need, and I've always been able to use the, the Villager for the best kart that I can have. So... Villager is my favorite. Not to mention, I love the Villager because I love Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing is my favorite series. And yeah, the Villager is top tier for sure. Next, we have Zern asking opinion on Ed Sheeran. Uh, I can't, I, I I have none. I don't know what he's like as a person. I've heard like two songs. Um, I couldn't even, Shape of You, Castle on the Hill. Like, I, I don't know the, I don't have an opinion, but uh. From those two, I mean, he's definitely good. He's definitely a good, good artist, but I couldn't give you much on him. Yeah, I've, I've only ever heard those two songs. What was your first Nintendo console? Asked by Captain Dominic 64 First console. So, it's complicated because when I was born, like, when I was, like, not even a year old. Not that I was playing any console at less than a year old, but my family had a GameCube. It's the black GameCube. It's in the other room right now. And so I played it when I was like four or so. I believe this was like the Wii was already out, but I just picked up the GameCube. And then we got a Wii, I believe, a few years after it came out. And that's the first console that I was able to like comprehend and know what I was doing. And I could like navigate the whole menu, boot up a game. So it's the GameCube was the first like controller I ever held. But the Wii was the first console that I have memory of. I don't remember much. I remember like one one experience with the GameCube when, when I was like three or four. Um, but the Wii was the one where I really experienced it. I could navigate the whole thing. I could do it all. So I was a pretty intelligent four and five year old using, using the Wii, navigating the whole home menu on the dang uh, Wii Shop channel. Just browsing through, you know, it was fun stuff. So those are the two consoles, but it's technically the GameCube. Next, we have Luigi Bros. 4321 asking, favorite Switch game? 
So my favorite Switch game of all time would have to be Animal Crossing New Horizons, which might come as a shock to some of you guys, because I have said that game is overhyped, but what ends up happening is my words get twisted. So you'll see comments here and they're saying like, he hates Animal Crossing because they forget what I said about it. I said something negative about it, but it wasn't that the game was bad. It wasn't that I don't like the game, but it's a little bit overhyped. So my words have been kind of twisted in the comments. I love Animal Crossing New Horizons. Is it the best ever Animal Crossing game? I don't believe so. But is it a great one? For sure. Is it a great Switch game? For sure. Animal Crossing New Horizons is one of the best, like, top 20 games of mine. And so I can't say it's a bad game. It's not a bad game. It's my favorite Switch game. And, I mean, yeah. What else, what else do you say? I've put 2,000 hours into it. That's the most I've put into... I believe any game, Disney Infinity might come close, but uh, that's a lot of time. So, Animal Crossing New Horizons for sure. Next, we have that diehard Mario fan asking, which unrevealed character do you want to see the most in the new Mario movie? Okay, so we have a lot. We, we've, we've seen Cranky Kong, Donkey Kong, Luigi, you know, all the main guys. I believe, yo, okay, so I thought about this. One character that I didn't see, I don't believe is in the movie, is Toadsworth, the kind of grandpa Toad with, with the glasses. He appeared in Super Mario Sunshine and a few games after that. Where's Toadsworth? I didn't see him. Maybe if he's there, I'm, I'm going to sound real stupid. But I didn't see Toadsworth anywhere, and I would love to see Toadsworth in the actual movie. And that diehard Mario fan also asks, and favorite and least favorite Mario Kart 8 booster course tracks so far. So, okay, it's going to be hard to choose a least favorite. So, so my favorite, although it's not in season for most of the time, my, my all-time favorite is Merry Mountain. I love that one. Now, beyond that, and that is, that is always in season, I love London Loop. That's my second favorite, London Loop and Merry Mountain. Merry Mountain, London Loop. So those are my top two. Now my least favorite, that's hard because I love all of them. If I have to pick one, and once again, I don't like, I don't dislike this one at all, but if I have to pick one that is just not as good as the others, I would probably say the Shroom Ridge, like from the DS, I just, it's not bad at all. And I love that one, but it's just not as action-packed as some of the other ones are. So it, by default, it kind of has to be my least favorite. Next, 3upMoon asks, what do you think of the Grinch? The Grinch, I wish he didn't steal Christmas. But beyond that, I don't mind the Grinch. The, Gr the Grinch is quite nice, I would say. Next, we have a bunch of letters. R-S-M-X-N-S-N. That's, that's the username. So they ask, favorite story-driven slash multiple choice game. Now... There's one game that comes to mind, and it's probably the answer, because I've not played many games like that, where you have a multiple choice and you choose in a story, you know, but I mean, is that like Minecraft story mode? Because that's probably my answer, Minecraft story mode. That's probably the answer because you choose your path in the game, and it's, it's really fun. But I've not played many games like that, so by default, that is my answer. So yeah, Minecraft story mode, uh, the first one. I know that they've made multiple after that, but I've not played the uh, the uh, newer ones, just the first one. And yeah, I just didn't have interest in the newer ones, but you know, we move. Next, Stuck in the Shadows asks, favorite retro game? Favorite retro game is probably going to be, I mean, I'm thinking like like NES era. It's probably, it's probably Punch-Out. We said it earlier, but I think Punch-Out is my favorite like older game like that. Now, if you mean even older than that, I like Pac-Man. Don't, not, not to be basic, Pac-Man is cool, Galaga is nice, any of those ones are also pretty cool as well. Next we have favorite Kirby copy ability, we answered that one, the Ranger one. Uh, JC the Memer asks, favorite Splatoon 3 weapon, I believe we answered that as well, right? The uh, sploosh matic So, sploosh matic And then Luigi Bros 4321 asks, what reason do you think your long videos don't get so many views, but these shorts do get many views. The reason for that, I believe, is because when you post the shorts, they get pushed out onto the shorts timeline feed. So if someone's on their phone, they're scrolling through, my video could pop up, and right away, that is a view. But with my long form videos, they don't get pushed out like how shorts do. It's kind of like, why does some TikToks get millions of views, but some YouTube videos don't? Like, 
it's kind of like that because that whole algorithm is totally different where they get pushed out to so many people. The entire algorithm is different and I'm actually trying to make more long form content be, uh, besides this podcast. I'm planning some videos right now and I'll start making long form content. I want to, I want to make maybe like one, maybe one a week. I'm not too sure yet, but until the shorts die, one long form content, but until the shorts die, I'll probably do one piece of long form content besides the podcast each week, starting maybe next month or so. Don't quote me on that, but sometime around there, I'm going to do more long form content. And I've actually started taking this podcast and turning it into YouTube shorts. So that is there as well. And yeah, uh, it just depends on the algorithm. It just doesn't get the exact same love. So that's the main reason. But that is all of our questions. And that is it for the Mario Matter. Thank you all so much for watching this episode. If you did enjoy, make sure to like if you're on YouTube. If you're on Spotify or Apple, give us a pleasant rating if you wouldn't mind. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I love you all. I'll see you all next episode. Shout out to our channel members on YouTube who support the channel very kindly and help me create the content that I do. I love you all. I'll see you all in the next episode and in the next YouTube short. I'll see you then and have a good one. Take care. Adios. Mm -hmm.